Greetings to all. With respect to the generalized procedure to design the any type of electrical machine, we have discussed as of now the initial design equations and then sizing equations with respect to the d square l and d cube l products and then stator, stator core design and rotor core design. First three steps we have completed. The next thing will be performance parameters. Okay. So, how to analyze the performance parameters to see the mission behavior with respect to the magnetizing currents, we can see here the magnetizing currents and no load currents and full load currents, how to calculate it and the MMFs, fluxes and B, uh, B values, flux densities and flux intensity values at different parts of irons okay. and different inductance values and torque components, what is the starting torque, peak torque and rated torque and etcetera and efficiency uh, things with respect to the all type of losses, iron loss uh, and, and uh, copper loss and frictional and windage losses and etcetera, how to calculate the efficiency also we will discuss with respect to the performance parameters these performance parameters are used to analyze the mission behavior. So, first we will discuss about the magnetizing current. In this lecture we will discuss how to analyze the magnetizing current. In general, all type of rotating electrical machines consist of air gaps. In order to establish the flux at the air gap, we require the current. Okay, that current is nothing but magnetizing current. Okay. Generally, MMF N into I is equals to flux into reluctance and which is equals to H into L. Okay. So, in order to find the current, we have to find the flux intensity over the uh, length of the magnetic uh, path divided by number of tons or flux into reluctance divided by number of tons. In order to find the magnetizing current, we have to find the H fields over the different parts of iron and fluxes or reluctance with respect to the different parts of iron we have to analyze. If we will excite the stator winding, let us consider this is the three phase machine, four pole and 36 slot uh, stator core I have considered and we are exciting with three phase supply and the flux lines will form in this manner, the flux loops we can see observe in this figure. Because of the excitation, the flux is flowing through the stator uh, teeth, we can see here the stator teeth and air gap rotor teeth and rotor back iron and again back to the rotor teeth in this portion and air gap, then back to the stator teeth and then stator back iron or stator core. So, the flux is flowing through the following path like two rotor, uh, rotor teeth and two stator teeth. and two air gaps, one stator core back iron and one portion of rotor core back iron. We can see here red color uh, line. So, it is flowing through one portion of uh, stator core and one portion of stator uh, teeth and then air gap, rotor teeth and rotor back iron and like that. So, like this flux is flowing through the different parts of iron, there is a MMF drops also. We have to find all this MMF drops and with respect to that particular MMF and number of tons with respect to the stator winding then we can find the magnetizing current. Okay. 
So, the first step we have to analyze the fluxes and reluctances as well as MMFs in different parts of iron. Once we have calculated all these things then we can find the magnetizing current. So, first I will start with flux how to uh, visualize the flux in the different parts. The flux lines as well as B fields in different parts of iron depends upon what area of that particular part as well as reluctance. Okay. The flux lines as well as B fields depends upon the area as well as reluctance of that particular uh, part. For example, let us consider the air gap. Okay. If, if there is no slottings, the magnetic fields will flow in this manner. Okay, depends upon the slotting or unslotting. If there is a slotting like this manner, this is the air gap. So, the flux lines here will flow in this manner and there is a chance to flow in this way also, right. Depends upon the slotting effects, the flux lines at the air gap are flowing. If we will consider the core or teeth portion. Okay. It depends upon the slot shape and teeth width and back iron width. Okay. So, here flux is depending upon the indirectly the width and slot shapes are nothing but length and area it is depending upon the reluctance values as well as length and area of that particular part. We can see here the flux in the rotor core depends upon the back iron width and teeth width okay, and slotting effects whether uniform air gap is there or not based on that the flux lines will vary. So, first with respect to the effective air gap how the flux lines are varying we will analyze after that fluxes and different uh, reluctance values with respect to different parts of iron we will discuss. So, let us consider the two cases, case 1 where the stator as well as rotor does not have any slotting effects, both are cylindrical type of things, otherwise one side uh, slotting effect is there, other side cylindrical rotor is there, there is no slots at the rotor side. Then for a slot pitch tau s consider I am considering stator side slots are there and this is the air gap length Lg. Here the flux lines will flow in this manner in a air gap. Okay. The slot pitch with respect to the stator side is tau s. Okay. Here reluctance will be some value will be there and permeance some value will be there. Case 2 if we will consider the slotting one, okay. so let us consider either stator side or rotor side we have the slots. Okay. Now, we will see the slotting effect. Here the flux lines will flow in this fashion, straight lines. Okay. The length of this straight line will be Lg in the air gap. The width of stator teeth will be T0 and uh, this one will be B naught and slot pitch will be from this point to this point is slot pitch that is tau s. If we will see the flux lines in this region where at the side portion of the slot or teeth, here the flux lines will flow in this fashion. Okay. Other side of the slot will be in this manner. 
So, half of the portion will diverge or with the flux lines will flow towards the stator teeth like bulging effects of the flux lines or in the magnetic circuits we have discussed the fringing type of flux right. Same fashion here instead of flowing the flux lines from this portion it will flow through the sides of the stator teeth or rotor teeth. Here the length will be Lg plus some radius portion this is the radius R. Okay. The length of the flux lines now is equals to Lg plus pi into R divided by 2. How this, uh, how this pi r by 2 is arrived means the total perimeter will be 2 pi r and quarter portion only we are seeing right that is by 4. So, we can get the effective length of the flux lines with respect to the sides of the stator teeth in this portion is L g plus pi r by 2. Now, we will see the reluctance with respect to these two cases. Definitely the reluctance with respect to the case 1 and reluctance with respect to case 2 will be different and permeance which is inversely proportional to the reluctance permeance also will change right. So, we will do the analysis with respect to the permeances. Let us consider the case 1 for case 1 the permeance is equals to that is unslotted portion permeance is equals to 1 by reluctance that is mu a by L. Here L is nothing but effective length of the air gap that is L g e without any slotting where the flux lines are flowing in a straight line manner that is L g e and slot pitch will be tau s. Okay. So, the cross sectional area we will calculate by considering the slot pitch tau s in mm into length of the core will be L e. Okay. This is the permeance with respect to the unslotted core. Okay. This is equation number 1. Now, slotted core with respect to the case 2 whatever we have discussed here with respect to this one we will discuss. Here the permeance is a combination of two terms. The permeance with respect to slotted portion is equals to permeance with respect to the uh, teeth portion that is P1 plus permeance with respect to the uh, dip portion where the uh, slot depth is there, depth of the slot where we are placing the conductors that is uh, flux lines are entering through the side walls of the stator teeth. Okay. Two portions are there because of two I am considering here, I will redraw that thing here. we can see in this figure. So, the permeance with respect to this portion is P 1, the permeance with respect to this portion and this portion is nothing but P 2, here also P 2 is there and here also P 2 is there because of that reason the effective permeance with respect to the slotted type of uh, structure is nothing but 
P s is equals to P 1 plus 2 P 2. At the end we will equate this one and this one to find the effective air gap length. So, the effective air gap length L g e in this type of case one and effective type of effective length of air gap in the slotting portion what is the difference ok. As of now we have considered L g is constant right length of air gap because of slotting effect this length of air gap may not be same. We can see here in a region 1 the length will be L g L g in a region 2 the length will be L g plus pi r by 2 that is what we have discussed right here. So, with respect to this different lengths we will calculate the permeances. So, the first term the permeance with respect to the top of the stator teeth ok or teeth portion is nothing but 1 by reluctance that is is equals to mu a by L. So, here mu is nothing but mu naught here also it is mu naught because it is a uh, air gap right mu naught into slot uh, pitch is tau s minus b naught ok because we have to calculate this length right this length I am calculating that is tau s minus b naught into L e divided by L g ok. L e is the length of the core and L g is the area uh, length of the air gap. Now, in order to find the permeance in a slotted portion ok where the flux lines are entering from the sides of the stator teeth for that permeance is equals to a 1 by mu a by L same equation. Let us consider any small portion of the thickness d r here the flux lines are coming in this fashion right. This is the small portion of d r any small portion in this interval we can consider it and this is L g length of the air gap the where the flux lines are entering into the stator teeth like this manner flux lines are entering into the stator teeth right. So, d r is the portion of thickness and length of the core is L e over a single stator slot if we will draw uh, if we will write the permeance equation the change in permeance is equals to mu a by L that is mu naught into area is nothing but small portion d r into L e divided by actual length of the flux uh, lines that is L g plus pi into r by 2 r length of the air gap I can say from this point to this point length of the air gap is L g plus pi r by 2. The total permeance with respect to one side of the stator teeth P 2 is equals to integral of limits 0 to B naught by 2. This portion where the flux lines are flowing that is B naught by 2 right half of the portion is flowing this side and half of the portion is flowing this side this is B naught by 2 and here also it is B naught by 2 ok. The limits will be 0 to B naught by 2 then mu naught d r into L e by L g plus pi into r by 2 ok. We have to solve this equation by considering L g plus pi r by 2 equal to x ok. Consider this value is equals to x then d r is equal So, in order to do the d r value we will rewrite the this equation like 0 to b naught by 2 into mu naught t r into L e divided by 2 into L g by pi into 
sorry plus r. So, in order to make the derivative I am uh, removing the terms with respect to the r only sim, uh, r will be there and remaining terms I am bringing outside. So, it will be 2 by pi outside will be there ok. In this equation so the final thing 2 into mu naught L e by pi integral 0 to b naught by 2 into d r by 2 into L g divided by pi plus r. So, we can consider the denominator term 2 into L g by pi plus r equals to some x. So, d r equals to d x right. So, I can substitute 0 to b naught by 2 d x by x 2 into mu naught L e by pi this is permeance with respect to one side of stator teeth. By solving this equation the permeance with respect to one side of stator uh, teeth will be 2 into mu naught L e by pi into log L n of 1 plus pi into b naught divided by 4 L g. In between I have not derived the steps I gave the hint like x equals to this uh, 2 L g by pi plus r we can consider and make the derivative and this term integration will be L n of uh, x plus c we can do and c value we can find constant value and substitute it back then we can find this expression. Now, the effective permeance with respect to the slotted rotor or stator like case 2 okay, is equals to slotted portion is equals to permeance with respect to the teeth portion plus 2 into permeance with respect to the uh, flux lines entering at the side of the stator teeth. If I will add these two things like this is equation number 2 and equation number 3 and equation number 4. From equation number 3 and 4 we can find the resultant permeance with respect to the slotted rotor is equals to mu naught into tau s minus b naught by L g into L e plus 4 into mu naught into L e by L uh, pi into log of 1 plus pi into b naught by 4 L g. Okay. This is the effective permeance equation. If we will rearrange the terms by taking mu naught and L e outside tau s minus b naught by L g plus 4 into 4 by pi, 4 by pi into log of 1 plus pi into b naught divided by 4 into length of air gap. Okay. This is permeance with respect to the slotted portion equation number 5. From case 1 we have derived the permeance with respect to the unslotted uh, one and from case 2 permeance with respect to the slotted portion we have derived. In an ideal condition we are considering the length of air gap will be L g only, but in order to find the actual MMFs and actual fluxes with respect to the uh, different air gaps in a different slot shapes we have to equate these two things. Then we will see mu naught into L e into slot pitch divided by effective length of air gap is equals to this term. This term completely I will copy if I will substitute here then mu naught 
टन म्यू नॉट एल ई टर्म विल बी कैंसिल्ड ईच अदर एंड इफ विल री राइट द टर्म्स इन द फॉर्म एल जी ई एफेक्टिव लेंथ ऑफ एयर गैप इज इक्वल्स टू टाउ एस डिवाइडेड बाई टाउ एस माइनस बी नॉट इंटू सॉरी प्लस फोर इंटू एल जी बाई पाई इंटू लाग ऑफ वन प्लस पाई इंटू बी नॉट बाई फोर एल जी इंटू लेंथ ऑफ एयर गैप इन ए लाइक स्लाटेड मिशन वेर द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टीथ टीथ पोजिशन टू द स्टेटर आउटर डायमीटर वी कैन सी दैट वन हियर इन दिस इमेज this length will be from actual air gap length will be lg and effective length with respect to the unslotted position unslotted uh, type of machine will be lge so we are comparing these two types and we are calculating the effective uh, length of air gap so this complete term we can represent it as a some constant that is called as a kc into lg here kc is nothing but carter coefficient it is used to find the actual air gap length of a machine any type of machine we can utilize the same equation this is equation number 6 final equation for the carter coefficient where kc is equals to tau s slot pitch divided by slot pitch minus b not here b not is nothing but uh, slot width into 4 into lg divided by pi into ln of 1 plus pi into b not divided by 4 into lg don't confuse this b uh, b not and slot opening b not this b not will be with reference to this slot portion only here b not will be the slot width i can say okay so this is the carter coefficient if the double slotted mission we can see here the stator lamination as well as rotor lamination okay this is the stator lamination and this is the stator lamination i am showing here if the bo uh, both sides we have slotting then it is double slotted mission where the effective length of air gap lge is equals to kc yes that is carter coefficient for stator carter coefficient for rotor into lg where kc s is equals to tau s divided by tau s minus b not same equation only we have to replace with slot pitch with respect to the stator slot pitch with respect to the rotor 4 into lg by pi ln 1 plus pi into b not by 4 into lg okay similarly kc r also just replace tau r and tau r plus the remaining term we can substitute it here okay so these are the carter coefficients for stator and carter coefficients for rotor okay in the bracket same 4 into lg divided by pi ln of log of 1 plus pi into b not by 4 lg so with this we can calculate the effective length of air gap once we know the effective length of air gap we can calculate the magnetic fields at the air gap and area of the air gap and mmfs also okay and flux all those things we will discuss in the coming lectures here we can see the carter coefficient and some empirical formula this is with respect to the derivation by considering the conventional reluctance and permeances we have derived the carter coefficient will be this equation some empirical formula to find the carter coefficient is k 
kc is equals to slot pitch tau s divided by tau s minus b naught square divided by 5 into lg plus b naught. Okay, this is the approximate and empirical formula to find the Carter coefficient. For a stator, it will be tau s. For rotor, in terms of tau r, we can represent. Okay, we can utilize either this equation or this equation. This is equation number 7 and this is equation number 8 we can consider equation number 7 or equation number 8 to find the Carter coefficient. In general, for open type of slots, the effective length of air gap will be greater than 70 to 80 percent of uh, effect, uh, actual length of air gap. For semi open type of slots like for all type of electrical machines we are utilizing semi open type of slots right where the effective length of air gap will be 15 to 25 percent of LG higher than the this much okay like here 1.7 times the actual LG here 1.25 times the actual LG. Okay. The effective length of air gap with respect to the different type of slots we can see here LG plus 70 to 80 percent of LG, LG plus 15 to 25 percent of LG. With this I am concluding this lecture. In this lecture we have discussed the Carter coefficients to find the effective length of air gap. In the coming lectures, we will utilize this effective length of air gap equation to find the magnetic fields at the air gap and MMFs with respect to the air gap. Thank you.